Hello, this is Mara Jade, and I'm here with another video, and while the hot topic of discussion is more or less still centered around the Warner Brothers DC film Birds of Prey, I would love to not talk about that film again, if at all possible, because one, I did not like it in the, really in the slightest, they butchered character backstories, two, the Birds of Prey stands that have been popping up left and right on Twitter have been annoying as hell, and three, I would like to go more into positive territory of films that I'm actually anticipating seeing, including Wonder Woman 1984 and the new Batman film that's coming out in 2021, and I found this article on Bounding Into Comics entitled... Rumor Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson's Batman to take place in year two. I have some thoughts about that, knowing what I know of the storyline for that film, and I'll go into it once we start getting into this article, so let's dive into it, shall we? Okay. The Batman promises something edgy and different, and given the fact that Batman is the world's greatest detective, I would love to see a noir-centric film around Batman and the basically the rogues gallery of villains. Or so the cast and its composer, Michael Giacchino, would have us believe. But it may be recycling what Warner Brothers had in mind before Man of Steel landed in theaters. Following the release of the first camera test footage of Robert Pattinson in the Batsuit, footage I did like, I would love to see the colors of that Batsuit, but I did like the look of it so far. The rap reported that the film would take place in Bruce Wayne's second year as the Dark Knight Detective, and here's where there's, I guess, positive and negative sides to that. Positive being, and without going into the storyline uh, itself, because that would go into spoiler territory if this ends up being true, and that is we would be introduced to a new adversary for Batman, at least not one that's not been on film, and that is the Reaper. Again, I'm not going to go into details about that because it would go into spoiler territory about who the Reaper is and what connection he has to Batman. However, the gist of the storyline is because the Reaper is acting as another vigilante in Gotham taking out the criminal underworld, it forces Batman, in a way, to team up with mobsters to take down the Reaper. Because at this point, Batman is established, more or less, as the vigilante that he, we know him as. Basically, this is year two, so he's gone through the growing pains of figuring out the bat suits and starting to figure out his tech. Um, however... With the casting choices and the emphasis on the certain villains that they've been promoting, such as Penguin, Riddler, and Two-Face, and Catwoman, it would, um, in a way, be a bait-and-switch. Now, this does not necessarily mean it's a bad thing, because they could be saving it if it's true. As a surprise in the trailer, it, it does, as I said, it, in a way, be a bait-and-switch. Basically, sucker you in, because you're expecting to see the villains being the what they've promoted in the Penguin, Riddler, uh, Two-Face and Catwoman, only to go, surprise, they're not the villains in the movie, the actual adversary's uh, the Reaper. So, I don't know how people are going to take that, necessarily, because they're going in expecting one thing and getting their expectations subverted. Now, that does not necessarily mean a negative thing, although TLJ, whew, um, but it could be positive. Again, I don't know, because we haven't seen trailers, they've just started filming, we're only going off of rumors and speculation at this point. Positive side of that is, uh, again, because we have not seen him on film, it goes into what I would love them to do with the Batman films, or any upcoming Batman films for that matter, and that is to introduce villains we have not seen before, or at least better representations of the villains that we have seen so far. Villains that we have not seen before, for example, I would love to see Clayface, I would love to see Man Bat, uh, Professor Pig, I would love to see... I would love to see a better representation of Bane on screen, a better representation of Scarecrow that we have not that we've seen so far on screen, because he was barely and all at all in Batman Begins as Scarecrow. I'd like to see Poison Ivy again. I would love to see Mr. Freeze again, and as cheesy and awesome as Arnold Schwarzenegger's lines were in Batman and Robin, Mr. Freeze can be a very sympathetic character, as we've saw, seen in um, the Batman and the Animated Series. So I would love to see a, another, again, better representation of the characters. Because you have the rogues gallery of villains, and yet they seem to want to, to resort constantly to using the top ones that people know and love. Even though there are those that people do know and love that have not been shown before. So, I don't know. We'll see. I, I don't know what to take with this. Take it with a huge grain of salt. It could be positive. It could be negative. I don't know. But that's the gist. Of if they were to go into year two, that's what we'd be expecting. As far as the storyline goes. And here's a picture of the 
cover, 30th Anniversary Deluxe Edition, so you can see the sickle the Reaper uses. Okay, Cosmic Book News writer Matt McGloin, not entirely garbage to your website as far as um, media coverage of certain films, or but you do take it with a huge grain of salt, um, as with any other site. Claiming to have inside sources for films or upcoming films and so forth. Claims the idea of a second year Batman goes all the way back to 2012 when a Batman solo film was expected to release sometime in 2016. Okay, McGloin wrote back in 2012, I'm told that a new Batman movie might be slated for 2016 following the Justice League movie and it will be not be an origin story like Amazing Spider-Man, but will feature a Batman who is entering his second year as a hero. Again, I mean, it could be seen as a positive, it could be seen as a negative. I don't know at this point because we're only going off of speculation with the film and the rumor mill being churned out with stories about the film before trailers have even been coming out. McGloin continued his insider info is confirmed. I love that. Confirmed because only he's confirming it. No one else has. And Warner Brothers is reverting to the original plan, which is, he guessed, was writer-director Matt Reeves' intent from the beginning. While Reeves might be using the idea of Batman in his second year, there are some differences in what was originally reported back in 2012. The main difference is that the alleged pitch back then indicated the film was going to explore Arkham, something Bat and Affleck was going to do in his script for the Batman as well. I would have loved to see that. I would have loved to have seen actual, basically, deep dive into Arkham Asylum, like showing that on film, not just, hey, here's Arkham Asylum in the background of whatever DC film is um, being slated. Affleck bailed from the project and the DC Extended Universe altogether over reported creative and personal issues. He went as far as declaring, I'm not Batman, on Jimmy Kimmel when Reeves' take was made official. Man of Steel, McGloin points out, was to make Superman a centerpiece for, of the Justice League. Unfortunately, it didn't make the billion dollars the studio was hoping for, and they rushed the shared universe with BVS. Director of all three films, Zack Snyder, may be dismissed, but we are still experiencing the fallout of Dub Warner Brothers' decisions during this period. Justice League's Snyder Cut is still a bone of contention, and supporters want it released. Me being one of them, and several others that I know on Twitter, would love to see the Snyder Cut be released. Now, me personally, I'm not ex exactly expecting it to be great, necessarily. I just want to see it, to, to compare it to what we got. Because everything I've seen up to this point with uh, b um, behind the scenes imagery and so forth tells me that we could have had a pretty damn good film. But I won't know that until Warner Brothers releases it and they're sitting on it like the, uh, like the studio with their heads up their collective asses that they are. In the current superhero climate, Warner Brothers, Warner is doing more standalone movies again and execs feel mimicking the Marvel model is less urgent. Well, why did you go that route to begin with? Because you were, one, stupid, and two, you basically screwed over Zack Snyder, in my personal opinion. Whether or not you agree with me, that's just my opinion. McGloin suspects a soft reboot of the DCEU is coming due to Reeves' younger Batman, James Gunn's Suicide Squad, and J.J. Abrams' oh, Possibly tackling a younger Superman and Green Lantern. Please, dear God, don't bring J.J. Abrams into this. Abrams might also have eyes on Justice League, a rumor we reported. Oh, fucking God. Don't bring Abrams in. He's, he's a decent producer, he's a decent director, but for fuck's sake, he cannot write worth shit. Complicating things are Henry Cavill lobbying to remain in possession of the Red Cape and Abrams' alleged focus on Swamp Thing and Justice League Dark. Either way, there is a new beginning in the Batman which is in production now and coming out in June 2021. In case you missed it, Matt Reeves gave us our first glimpse of Robert Patton's bad suit in a camera test he shared on social media Thursday. And we uh, talked about that Lethal Lightning and myself on our live stream last Saturday. I'll post a link to that in the uh, description for this video, so you can go check it out. Okay? Uh, are you interested in seeing ba a Batman in his second year patrolling Gotham? Uh, well, as I said, you know, it could be positive, it could be negative. The positive being it would be an adversary we've not seen on film before. Um, 
But the negative being that it could be a bait and switch approach, which would be pulling, basically suckering people in, expecting to see either the Penguin, Riddler, Two Face, or Catwoman even being the villains of the film, and then go surprise, they're not. They're actually going to team up with the Batman to take down the Reaper. I don't know. We'll see. Again, uh, this is Mara Jade. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments. Are you planning on seeing the Batman film? Are you not planning on seing it? Did you like the Batsuit reveal? What did you like? What did you not like about it? If you like my content, uh, subscribe if you will. Share it on social media if you so choose. Again, one more time, I'm out of Twitter jail. I can share my own videos. Uh, so, two things I learned. You can call a man a thought, but you can't... But uh, you, well, I should say, a man can call a woman a hoe, but a woman can't call a man a thought. So, I had the screenshots to prove that from my stint in Twitter jail. But anyway, this is Mara Jade. I hope you enjoy my content. I will do be doing a 1,000 subscriber sort of celebration type stream as part of the Nerdy and Lethal live stream that I'll be doing with Lethal Lightning this Saturday. So, please come by. If you have any questions for me, as far as like what we, you would like to know about me, as long as they're not too personal, or something that I can share from my military experience, I will answer to my be best of my abilities. This is Mara Jade, and I'll catch you on the dark side. Take care.